Hello everyone and welcome to a Sew With Me review. Today we're going to be doing Vintage Vogue V8811. Uh, I've got this amazing cotton linen uh, pineapple tropical type vibes ready for summer which is you know going to be here soon in Australia so may as well get ready now. Uh, right now I'm just organizing all my pieces that I'm going to need and checking out the instructions before I get started because we've all been there where we've been halfway and realized I have no idea what I'm doing. So here's a little footage of me going, what am I doing? So what I'm doing now is checking the actual pattern measurements against mine to see if I need to go a size up or down to what I would normally do. And that's quite common with vintage folks, so always check that. Um, and now I'm just measuring a hem. I am a shorter person, but really I'm actually just quite average, but when it comes to patterns, they're made for people who are like six feet tall. So we're always gonna check our hem, and it also means that we're gonna be able to save on fabric. So here I'm taking off about nine inches of the hem. I did want a shorter dress anyway, as this one can be, you know, a, a long tea length situation, and that's just not my most flattering look. I'm just using a French curve now to smooth out that hem. So now that we have all our pieces cut out, we're gonna go straight into the darts situation. Uh, normally I use, it's like a tailor's tack, but it's kind of like a lazy way to do a tailor's tack where I kind of just sew some thread indicators into the fabric and then I snip snip, roll it up and sew along the lines. So as you can see the bodice looks quite large and that's, you know, sort of the style of the 1940s. They have a nice loose up top which can be appreciated because it means that you can reach for the sky which you can't really do with modern patterns so I appreciate that. However, I have looked at other people's photos when they've made this on sewingpatternreview.com and it's also just not the most flattering dress yet the picture on the pattern is just too tempting and it makes you want to do it. So one of the reasons that I like this pattern is that there is no back seam, woohoo, or front seam, woohoo. We're just doing side seams on this, so that's awesome. Um, I have done a vintage Vogue before, and I found that it's quite common for them to have um, a side closure. And when I've done that side closure before, um, I used a zipper, but the problem was is that because clothes used to be quite loose fitting and you would wear a belt with it, like with this outfit, um, the zipper is too stiff that it doesn't fall right. So what I've done this time is instead of using a zipper, which is an option in the instructions, so the instructions have an option for a zipper or um, snaps closures, what I've done is I've opted for a button closure. Um, and that's gonna let the fabric sit just right along the belt and we're not gonna get any of that stiffness that I got. I did notice when I was pinning the front darts, it actually meets at the side seam, but it also meets at the apex of the side seam and the waist seam, and it just didn't line up. When I did eventually attach a skirt, I had to kind of go in and hand stitch to make sure I caught um, the bottom edge of the dart because it was gaping. It was like a, about a, a centimeter of a hole. And that could have just been me. I could have stretched the fabric the wrong way. I could have not stretched it enough. Um, so that was a bit problematic. However, it was not a deal breaker. It was an easy fix. And now on to the color piece. So I've already sewn it up. I've overlocked the edges. Um, and now um, I'm just marking the back slit of the neck so we can get our heads in and out. Now onto matching the color seams so we can get the facing going. Now normally I would do interfacing and this was just a mixture of me being lazy and I also just didn't want it to be super stiff as I only had um, really hard interfacing on hand the day that I did this. It's super important when we're aligning this color piece because of that back, back slit that we really want to make sure that it's centered and I probably should have made all these markings before I got to this stage but like we've established I'm a lazy sewer. So I'm just using those markings that I did on the actual facing, trying to align them as center as I could. Um, you can see I've now sewn and slit um, that gap and I can fold it over now and it looks quite fine. I think I managed, it's good. Here's just a closer look at the collar now that I've understitched it and get, given it a bit of a press. It looks good. I'm actually super happy with it. I do see that the bottom of my slit is actually a bit boxy, 
but that's just because I'm not really used to doing them and I will get better with time. Okay, now we actually look like I have a dress now. So I've attached the bodice to the skirt, leaving that side opening so we can start to do our buttons in the next step. So here I am preparing to attach the facing for the um, button closure side. It was super easy, no real dramas. It worked out better than the darts did on the bodice. So onward we go. Okay, so now it's in, it looks neat. I've pressed it inwards, but make sure one will be pressed inwards, one will be left outwards, so you actually get that lap. Um, and it looks pretty good. So now I'm just showing you that I did put the sleeve facing in, there was no dramas, I overlocked the raw edge and just sewed as normal. To the hard part now, picking buttons. So this is my great nana's tin and you can see me going through trying to pick out a nice set of white buttons to match the white of the dress. However, due to aging, almost all of them have like that little bit of a yellow tinge, which really just doesn't suit this look. I ended up doing a different set of buttons for above the waist and a different set of buttons for below. And this is how it turned out. I'm actually quite happy with it. No one's going to notice but me. Um, I did end up putting a hook eye closure right at the waist line because I was getting a bit of a bubble there and it was also just too thick with fabric to put a buttonhole there. So I let my dress hang overnight and I'm using the hemming tool on my dress form to make sure I get a straight edge. I then use my French curve to ease that edge to make it as natural as possible. So once my new hemline is marked, I've cut it to length, turned it in one inch and used the steam setting on my iron to ease that extra fabric upwards. I then used a blind hem stitch on my sewing machine. It is probably my favorite way to hem garments. When it comes to just linen or poplin dresses or things that I like to wear on the weekend, the blind hem foot works pretty well and there's no point wasting time on something that's not going to be in a photo shoot. So I've gone ahead and sewn the belt as per the instructions, however with a minor tweak. The pattern calls for a belt buckle closure and then to create your own belt holes. However, again, we established. I'm lazy. So what I did is I got um, a set of D-rings from Spotlight. They were pretty cheap, I think about $4, but it just means that the belt is ultimately adjustable and it was super easy to install. Now that I have my dress and my belt, I think we're ready to go. So here's the finished look. Um, in all, I'd probably call this dress a, a young Diana, a Diana before she married Charles. I would definitely say this dress is on the easy side of things. It's super accessible. Even if you end up with a little bit of a box moment for your um, neck slit like I did, no one's going to notice and the overall dress looked quite fine. I do think it looks a little bit odd in the bodice, however I really really love the skirt and that kind of holds true to the pictures I've seen of other people making this dress. In future I'd probably take the torso area in just a bit to make it look a little more modern because um, right now it just kind of looks frumpy and frumpy's fine for the weekend. Frumpy's fine for sitting on the couch on the veranda. However, frumpy's not really what we want when we're going to a high tea, say. So that's what I would do different next time. I really enjoyed this. All right, so thanks for watching my first video. I know it could be better, but still, if you feel the need to leave me a comment, please do so. If you liked this video, also leave me a comment. Also like and subscribe if you want to see more pattern reviews from mostly the big four. Um, it's a gap that I've personally found. I always love to see what other people have made with the patterns before I do, because let's be real, sometimes their photos are really, really bad on the pattern paper or on the website. So I always like to see some real world makes and I hope that I can help fill that gap online because it's definitely what I want to see more of. So if you want to share your makes, please do so. Also, let me know what patterns you'd like me to do in future. I have quite a big box of patterns that I've never actually ended up getting to. So this would be a great way to do it. Uh, my tactic with this channel is I'll be making what I was going to make anyway. However, I'll do a video on it so you can see how easy or difficult it is and if it's worth the final product. So thanks. I just need to let the first one be what it will be and I will get better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's better that I put it out and then be like, oh, I learned how to, I know how to edit better next time and I know how to better voice over next time. Yeah. And if I know that, like I'm, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah.